Hey, small business people and lovers of good stories in general. Welcome to episode 30 of Small Business War Stories. And this is a really cool one. I stopped by St. Louis, Missouri, and I sat down with Claire Flowers. Claire is somebody who decided that they wanted to start their own company, so she started making shoes. And she talks about all the ups and downs, all the things uh, that have gone well and gone wrong for her, um, and how she has turned basically just you know initial ideas and prototypes into a successful company. She also talks about what it's like to do business in the city of St. Louis, and she had some, uh, some really cool stories to share. This episode is part of the Soul of America tour, and as part of the Soul of America tour, it's sponsored by Tacovas Boots. Tacovas is uh, their Western cowboy boots, and I wore them every single day of the Soul of America tour. And the cool thing about them is that they you don't have to pay 700 bucks for handcrafted boots because they cut out the middleman and they give you the savings. You can check all of their models out. They come up with some really cool uh, new ones recently at Tacovas Boots, T E C O V A S Boots.com. The episode is also brought to you by Impact Crates. Impact Crates are dog safety crates. They're made in the USA. They're strong, safe, and secure, and they're made out of powder-coated lightweight aluminum. So they're made in different sizes, and my dog Muddy Waggers traveled in one of them every single day of the Soul of America tour. And if you go check them out at Impact Crates, you get 20% off by using code MUDDY20, M-U-D-D-Y-2-0. And the episode is also brought to you by Badger Mapping. Badger Mapping is the number one app for field salespeople in the Apple App Store. And it basically is an app that if you're a field salesperson that needs to hit up a bunch of different customers, you put all their addresses in and it helps you map out your route and be there on time and be effective in your travels. I used it for the Soul of America tour. And if you tell them you found them in small business war stories, they will give you two free months. And last but not least, the episode is also brought to you by Proven. And Proven is a company that I started, and it's a small business hiring tool. And we actually care about you as a small business. We will answer your calls. We will answer your emails. We'll help you write job descriptions. We'll help you uh, with your strategy for hiring. Um, and we are specifically designed for small businesses. So you post your job to us. We go and post it to over 100 job boards for you. And you can also choose menu-based, uh, you know, different premium job boards. A lot of cool things you can do. Thousands of small businesses use Proven to hire. You should join them. Check out the free trial at Proven.com. Without further ado, I want to get into the episode with Claire Flowers of Claire Flower Shoes in St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> businesses are the soul of America, and this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. And we are live here in beautiful St. Louis, Missouri, and I am sitting here with Claire Flowers of Claire Flowers LLC. Welcome to the show, Claire. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Awesome. Good. Doing well. Doing well. It's my first day here in St. Louis, and I'm excited to uh, to meet you. Excited to meet you too. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your company. So um, you, uh, so we talked right before the show, and I I knew that you made shoes. So I knew you as Claire Flowers Shoes, and mm -hmm. you mentioned that you're also doing apparel. But how um, how would you describe what you do, and how did the whole idea come about? Um, sure. So we um, not only do shoes, but we also do a line of leather dresses. And then I also have a joint venture um, that I just started with a woman um, named Julie O'Connor, and that's a line of reversible dresses. So everything that we do um, marries form and function. So we've all heard that. But what it means to us is taking um, stuff that is already out there, like high heel shoes, um, okay. and making it um, beautiful in terms of its aesthetic, but then also not painful, which is something that typically uh, women's high heel shoes are. Um, and then with dresses, um, a lot of times they're impractical in terms of like the textile might be linen, which wrinkles easily, or um, might be sequins or something that just doesn't make sense. So how do we marry um, 
a textile like leather that doesn't wrinkle and lasts forever um, with a silhouette like an A-line dress, something more functional that lasts forever. Okay. Um, so that's, that's really the premise of our business. Um, it started when I was traveling quite a bit for work. Okay. Um, I was in software sales and I would have a pair of high heel shoes that maybe would last like a week or two yeah. because I would get stuck in grates in cities, you know, like the grates on the street. Yeah. Um, and I'd rip my shoe out and all the leather would come off of the heel. Oof. So I'd, I'd be um, on a work trip and the heel cap would fall off or I'd slip and fall on the airport floor or whatever it might be. So I was constantly... Um, abusing my shoes and they were falling apart and I'd be on this work trip and I'd have to go to the cobbler. Yeah. And you, you learn how to be a shoe repair person. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be, you know, rubbing my uh, mascara into a scuff on my shoe or I'd be um, putting, you know, Sharpie on a band aid and wrapping it around the heel, you know, nice. stuff like that. When I, when it's I really should be, for women's shoes, right. I really <laughs> should be focused on work and, you know, closing deals and I'm focused on my shoes or I'm running to Marshall's between meetings yeah. and, Stupid stuff I shouldn't be doing. So um, all of a sudden, I'm in a, a week-long meeting in Manhattan, um, and I'm looking at my shoes, and it had been raining, and um, I had slipped and fall and um, gotten stuck in a grate and all that stuff. So I'm sitting and looking at my shoes and cataloging all the reasons why they sucked. And sure. um, I started drawing a pump that um, if I had designed it, how it would be and how it wouldn't do all these you know crappy things. So... At the end of this week-long training, I had come up with this shoe that had these five kind of unique attributes. Okay. Um, so I started Googling, like, shoes that don't get stuck in grades, shoes that do this and that. Sure. And um, couldn't find anything. So I went back to St. Louis and started looking for a shoe manufacturer. So you know how guys will get a custom suit made in, like, Thailand? They'll fly there for a yep. week. They'll make a vacation of it. Um They'll have a custom suit made, and then they'll go back to the States, and they'll wear it for 10 years because it fits them like a glove. Sure. So I wanted As long to as they keep staying in shape. <laughs> right, exactly. So I wanted to do that same thing with a pair of women's pumps. Okay. So lo and behold, you can't find um, a factory in the United States that will do that for you. Like, they won't do a private label for you. They just don't exist. There's no, right. there's no domestic shoe manufacturers that will, like, private label for you. So Are there domestic shoe manufacturers that sell for themselves? Yes. Okay. So, like new balance and you know they'll own their own so i'm obviously can't sell software and then open a shoe manufacturer you know in the Understood. states um so i'm then looking overseas and they all have these minimum order quantities okay but while i'm doing this i'm telling my sister my uh, mom my girlfriends i'm looking for the shoe manufacturer and they're saying why and I said, well, my shoes suck. I want them to, to, build, to be like Nikes, but then I want them to look like Jimmy Choo. So how, how do I do this? Okay. Um, and I tell them I want plates on the back so that the car floor mats don't rub that right shoe above the heel when I drive. Actually, that happens to my boots. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, and then I want um, heel caps that don't wear off and show that, middle, that metal pin, you know, and yeah. I'm not like walking on that metal pin and then scuffing up hardwood floors. I want um, I want the outsole to have some sort of like Goodyear um, vulcanized rubber tread okay. so that I don't slip and slide on airport floors because I was notoriously running late for flights, running through the airport. Uh, um, in heels with leather yeah, soles. Yeah, it was, it was terrible. So yeah. that was another attribute. I wanted them to not hurt. So okay. I was constantly doing trade shows or I was um, just on my feet all day. So um, they needed to not hurt by noon like all my high heels did. And then I also needed a heel that was wider at the base so that I didn't get stuck in those grates and cracks when I was right. walking. But then from the profile, the shoe still looks uh, yeah, stylized. Yeah, so I still yeah. wanted it to have like a feminine um, stiletto-like aesthetic because I think that's feminine. It looks good with a business suit. I didn't want it to be a wedge. I didn't want it to be matronly looking so Got it. i wanted it to fit this bill in terms of um look a certain way but also be durable and functional awesome so, so that's I'm, that's from the practical perspective right. now from the aesthetic perspective where do you get your inspiration for your designs i mean you, you were talking about the wanting to feel like a nike but look like a jimmy choo and wear like a caterpillar shoe <laughs> but, right uh, um well so that's complicated because um if I were to just design what I wanted, it'd be um, all, <laughs> it'd be a lot more kind of out there and whimsical than it is. Okay. But um, 
coming from like the practical business side of me and why I started the whole brand to to work kind of with uh, your professional side, but then also be okay with jeans on the weekend. I can't really do that. So what's what's um, kind of comes from my creativity versus what's marketable are two totally different things. And I understand that. So I don't necessarily design always what I want to. I design. Have you thought about doing both maybe? Yeah, I have. So I have like, I've been wanting to do a stingray pump, um, which I'm going to do. Um, but that's not something you'd probably wear to work. It might be something, but I'm thinking about it for like a bridal shoe. Okay. Um, I have like, I've done um, an ostrich like print embossed leather and okay. I've done a leopard print. But then for work, I do like a lot of black and gold and some some more basic, timeless, classic type stuff. Very cool. Yeah, um, which is fine. But anyway, back to how I started. Yeah. Um, so then these women were like, how did you or why are you looking for this shoe manufacturer? And I told them why. And so then they said, well, if you find a manufacturer and you make 10 pairs for yourself to wear the rest of your career, order me five. So oh. I thought if there's a demand for this, then... So did you get did you get a pre order then? No, I just I just thought I'm gonna keep my real job. I'm gonna make one run and see how it goes. Okay. That one run went well. And you financed it yourself. Mm -hmm. I self funded that, and then that one run went well. I did another run, and then it got to the point where if I was gonna continue, I was gonna need investors. Okay. And then they said, if you're gonna um, take capital from us then you're going to have to quit your job and it can't be a hobby. So I had to make a decision. So I quit my job. Yeah, that makes and sense. Then, Actually, I always tell people that starting a company at a startup is like an egg and bacon breakfast. Mm -hmm. And the egg and bacon breakfast, you have the pig and the chicken. And the chicken's involved in the breakfast, but the pig's committed. Mm -hmm. So they basically, they wanted you to, you know, be a pig and be in it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think sure. I think that makes a lot of sense. So where, where did you, you, you were saying that you got some batches made. Where did you make them? In Brazil. Brazil. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Where about in Brazil? Uh, Novo Hamburgo. Never it's been in, there. I've been to Rio and yeah, Salvador it's, it's and Sao Paulo before. Way south. Okay, mm -hmm. near Florianopolis or? It's the southernmost part of Brazil. Okay, near Paraguay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. exactly. Got you. Mm -hmm. Got you. Cool. So, how did you establish your relationships with people in Brazil to make that happen? Uh, that was difficult. So, um, I started looking for factories and. Um, most of them won't talk to you because a lot of people want to be in fashion and so they have an idea um they call a bunch of factories and um, try to get prototypes made sure so um factories are not in the business of just making prototypes for everyone that calls them okay so um they want to know that you're serious and you have a lot of money behind you which um, i was serious but at the time i didn't have a lot of money behind me sure so i had to get over that challenge so i called this guy in chicago who had several um, shoe lines throughout his career. Okay. And I asked him if he had any factory connections okay. and he said, I do. Um, and I will vouch for you if you just kind of pay me. So we just kind of told little white lies here and there and I paid him to endorse me. Got it. And he, to say that, to that, say that, you, that were, I, you were legit. Uh huh. Got um, it. and I mean, he didn't really know better. I wasn't legit. Um, so he did so, and then um, I found a perfect factory yeah. in Brazil that had low minimums, handmade shoes, awesome quality, was willing to invent with me um, yeah. things that they hadn't done before, um, and I'm still with them today, and they're amazing. That's awesome. How mm -hmm. often do you go down there? Uh, rarely. So they, okay. some very popular, well-known brands started there. Okay. So I didn't, that's an, another awesome thing about them. I didn't really have to vet them. Got it. Because other, you know, big companies had already vetted them. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, so I was mentioning before we started talking to Cobus Boots, uh, which is a sponsor of the of the podcast, and they were on an early episode, and they do cowboy boots that are you know direct to consumer, right? So they're kind of doing the Warby Parker model, mm -hmm. selling direct to consumers. <laughs> um, what is your opinion on the idea of selling direct to consumers versus selling through uh, distributors and retailers? I love it. Um, I'm really glad that I entered at a time like this. So um, I think it's awesome that, you know, I have to convince Susie Smith to buy my shoes as opposed to um, 
trying to convince Nordstrom that Susie's gonna like my shoes. Okay. If that makes sense. Do you sell all direct or all? No, your, what's I'm your in. Um, I'm probably ninety percent direct to consumer, ten okay. percent um, to retailers. So, so you I do am, have relationships with retailers. Oh, for sure, yeah. Got it. And what's that? Is there a tension there since you sell direct and have relationship with retailers? How does that work? No. Um, so I am really good about not disenfranchising my retailers so yep. i don't run sales i don't send out um there are coupon codes they're really hard to come by you have to come to like my private events or you have to kind of know or me be personally on the, or, or listen to small business war stories maybe right right <laughs> maybe that's, that's true um so so i do that purposely so um you know, it's it's commonplace now that when you buy something, you hop on your phone and you Google like coupon code or you look for the exact same product or you look at a SKU to see if you're getting the best deal. Right. So I don't want people to be in one of my retail shops and look up Claire Flowers and see on my website that the exact same product is discounted. Makes sense. Because um, I don't want to piss them off. So. So I'm I'm really careful to not do that. Are your retailers that you work with, are they all here in St. Louis or are you in other geographies? Well? I am also in um, Birmingham and Dallas. Birmingham, so Alabama. Alabama. Uh -huh. Oh, so wow. we are, that's kind of an interesting triangle. What uh, what prompted that? Uh, my sister is in banking and she lives in Birmingham. There um, you go. I spent two years at Auburn, so I have sort of like um, a couple friends there and um, we're focused on Atlanta, Dallas, and Birmingham. Okay. So what we found is that um, the West Coast, they have this kind of Google mentality. And yeah. so the professional women there are into flip flops and espadro espadrilles and um, sitting on s like stability balls at whatever at work. Sure. So it's kind of a different mindset. Yeah. Um, the women in the Northeast wear, um, you know, snow boots a lot of the year and sure. they're like a lot of walking cities and subways. So the they're not into heels or they're wearing snow boots and then getting or to work. Or they wear and, sneakers. In, right, in, in right. The so subway, a little bit yeah. different. So the Southeast is really where women still like to dress up for work, wear high heels, um, warmer climate. So they're still in heels majority of the year. Yeah. Um, and then my sister lives in Birmingham. I have a lot of friends in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, my good girlfriend Lauren lives there. And then um, Lori Newcomb works with me and she went to TCU and. Um, and lived in Dallas the last yeah. like eight years. Charleston, so, also North yeah, Carolina. So, right, th th those right. sound like areas. Where so we are really focused too. on St. Louis, um, Atlanta, Birmingham, and Dallas as our markets. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Have you thought about like expanding the Eastern Seaboard there? So Charleston, South Carolina, and right, North right. Carolina. Yeah, it seems I mean, like they have this similar kind of ethic. Sure. Yeah. Certainly, those are um, other cities. But I mean, as far as like the proximity of those also to each other right. just makes makes sense as our base two after St. Louis. So. Makes total sense. Yeah. What are what is maybe something that is specific and special about starting a women's shoe company versus starting say either a general or athletic shoe company or a men's shoe company? What what is it about a women's shoe company that's different and and special? Uh, well first of all, um I have no interest in the other ones, so I, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would I would not be having fun. Yeah. Um I mean, as far as um, being lucrative, I would I would assume that females buy more shoes than men, and That's I probably mean, true. <laughs> so <laughs> I would I would say maybe the um, profitability factor is there. Sure. Um, and then just from a design standpoint, there's there's more to design. There's more types of shoes um, yeah. for women than for men. So. Okay. I so mean, you have like more breath available. I would, yeah, through. I would think so. Okay. Um, what about the logistics and the, the like the manufacturing? You think there's any differences there or not? Well, yeah. Again, going back to um, there's more types of shoes, so yes, there's more um, diff differences in manufacturing associated with that. Then. Yeah, and sure. skews and sure, different of management mm -hmm. of inventory. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Do you have any industry insider uh, corny jokes for me? Not really. No, um, not really. <laughs> I do get um, so everywhere I go when when people hear that I'm a shoe designer, yeah. which, which I'm not. So that's a funny thing too. Um, I think when people hear that I'm a shoe designer, they think that I sit with a drafting table all day and like or color, and yeah. <laughs> which is not <laughs> yeah. remotely true. So, um, designing shoes is probably 2% of what I do. Okay. Um, when that rolls around twice a year, I design shoes. Um, and it's probably like, um, three hours. Yeah, it's it's I mean, I don't come out with that many designs and styles yeah. and they're all pretty basic because they go back to like longevity and I want it to last a long time. 
the styles. Um, timeless is kind of the thing. So yeah. um, the rest of the time, I'm, I'm running the whole business. Yeah. So it's Logistics, funny. Logistics, um, inventory, right. marketing, right. You know, right. finance, a lot of stuff, you know. Right. Nobody talks about it. Everybody, everybody just wants the glory, you know. Right. So I'm, I'm sitting there coloring all day. So anyway, um, <laughs> but immediately they want to tell me um, how I should design shoes and they what would be so cute. <laughs> so the funny, the funniest things are, um, the, the, the men. So I was in, what was it? Um, union city. I think that's a place in Tennessee. And this guy said I should put truck nuts on the back. Do you know what those are? <laughs> no. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, the, for our audience's right. benefit, what are truck nuts? Like, oh, uh, no. uh, so, uh, so that's always the best part is people's. Wow. Um, truck nuts on the shoes, like uh, above the heel, like hanging off the back. Wow, yeah, that is so, pretty damn wacky. Oh, I get it all the time. Just really great, really great design ideas. Wow. They're awful. They're all awful. <laughs> you, girls are bad too. Really? What are some of the worst ones you've gotten from girls? I don't know. They're just, they're just. All, I mean, who knows? Like buckles, hearts, unicorns, like, um, the horn of the unicorn as a heel. Like just stupid. <laughs> you know, you, I mean, it's, that's amazing. You should make an April Fool's shoe just like that and release it. With, yeah. uh, with the unicorn as a heel. That's all. <laughs> tell, tell me about a time when things didn't go well. So how, how long have you been doing this now? Three years. Three years. Yeah. So three years is plenty of time for things to go uh, sideways. So what, tell me about something that was uh, kind of a big moment of adversity for you and what did you do about it? God, things go wrong every single day. Um, I mean, I've sold shoes and they haven't arrived or... Um, We've had. <laughs> what happened when uh, when the, you sold the shoes that didn't arrive? Oh, I just have to um, email everyone that bought the shoes and wow. tell them they don't <laughs> they're not getting their shoes and they're coming late and offer discounts and apologize and. Um, I mean, I feel like anything that doesn't shut your doors isn't yeah. isn't really a disaster yeah there's I mean, always there's always a move right yeah you just got to figure out how to what right. the move is and how to do it how mm -hmm. to survive mm -hmm. i hear you i hear you if you were to give one piece of advice or one lesson to people who are either operating and starting small businesses or are thinking about that what would that be um i would just be cautious of bad advice i i mean when I first started, there are so many people that um, were older, more experienced, or had started a company that wanted to give me all their advice, all their free advice, um, <laughs> whether solicited or not. Sure. Um, I can't tell you how many people said, you to start a shoe company, you need to raise $3 million. I mean, if I would have... Um, if I would have told myself I had to do that or even done that... You know, I could still be raising money right now or I could have not done this at all. So, yeah. I mean, there's just so much bad advice out there that I think that, you know, it turns people off or it turns people away from whatever dream they're trying to pursue. And it's it's really unfortunate. Yeah. So basically listen to people, but triangulate your own truth. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I think there's just so many people crushing dreams <laughs> for, for no reason. I mean, yeah. you don't need three million dollars to start a business. Yeah. It's well, absurd. I mean, everybody's, you know, uh, advice is uh, a product of their own experience. And maybe that's the only way they've ever seen it. I guess. Yeah. I think it's probably on, on us as entrepreneurs to be able to figure out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that's kind of the hard part is who do you actually listen to and who do you not listen to? Or you, maybe you take like a bit of or a part of something that somebody said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What's your vision? Where do you see things going in the next 10 years? What do you want to do? I want to um, improve more products. So we, what we don't do is expand the line and the products that we offer just to expand the line. So we, we, we were not going to make belts just to make belts. Um, if we see a, prod a problem with a the belt, then we'll um, solve that problem and we'll make belts. Um, so I want to, when we see an issue with something, I want to um, come up with a solution and then I'll offer more stuff. So okay. it's, I you know, want to just continue down this road and expand the line. I want to become um, a global household name. Um, there you go. Yeah, so my... That's um, a vision. <laughs> yeah, so, That's you awesome. know, there's a 70-year-old man in Tallahassee, Florida right now that knows 
there's red bottom shoes. He doesn't okay. know that they're Christian Louboutins, but he knows they're red bottom shoes. So I want that guy to say hot pink heel shoes. Got he, it. He doesn't need to know my name, but I want him to recognize that. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What's it like to do uh, business in St. Louis? Like I said, it's my first time here. Uh, this is actually where we're currently in my first few hours here and I'm uh, moving on to Chicago tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But what's the business climate here? What is it like to work with other people in the community? What's it like to work with the city and the government of, of folks here? What's that climate like? It's awesome. Um, we have a really great startup climate. Um, I'm in a, I'm a volunteer in a group called House of Genius. Actually, I think that may have started in Austin. Oh, really? You definitely have one. It's really cool. I think I've heard of that. It's yeah, really it's... cool. You should get involved in that. Okay. Um, okay. I love it. So anyway, um, I think it's all over the world, actually. Okay. So um, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in St. Louis in terms of our startup community. Um, and then the people in general are very supportive in St. Louis. Um, government, yeah, that's an, that's another show, I think. Oh yeah. So. What's, uh, <laughs> what, what are some of the challenges you've had there? I mean, I think it's good to, you know, I, without being, uh, too negative, you know, you've had, you've had some challenges there that will remain. We have uh, a 1% city tax. And I think that sometimes, um, it's detrimental to startups or companies moving into the city. Okay. Is it a um, payroll tax? Yeah, and um, it's uh, so it taxes not only the employee one yeah. percent, but it also um, taxes the um, employer one percent. Oh, mm -hmm. so that's a lot. Right. So yeah, um, yeah. You, so, so that's something that you think could be a more friendly to to uh, up you know upcoming businesses. Sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Is there anything else that you want our audience to know about you or your company? Where can people find you? What are your social media handles, your website? Uh, what, what can people do? Awesome. Yeah, my website is claireflowers.com. Claire is C-L-A-I-R-E, and flowers is just like it sounds. Uh -huh. um, Instagram is claireflowersheels. Okay. And I'm on Twitter, Claire Flowers Shoes or Claire awesome. F Shoes. Facebook, I'm Claire Flowers. Um, I'm... Uh, in 11 stores in St. Louis and you can find them on my website under stores. Perfect. Well, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time thank you. to this sit was down fun. with me. The high, the high five. Yeah, it was awesome. fun. Thank, thank you. you. Do you want to do a coupon code? Oh, sure. Um, coupon code LES25 is for $25 off. LES25, yep. exclusive for the listeners of Small Business War Stories. Thank you so much for taking the time. Again. Thank you. Take awesome. Care. Thank you for listening to Small Business War Stories. If you enjoy the show, share it with a friend, or you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or on our blog at blog.proven.com. If you have an idea for us, we'd love to hear it. Please email us at podcast at proven.com. See you next time. Small Business War Stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. <laughs>